I'm lost. I'm confused. I'm looking all over for the signs of a horror movie and it's not there. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am the Horror Sensei and today I'm going to be reviewing the 2021 film Agnes. Oh boy. This was bad. And I mean bad, bad. Like... I don't even understand what kind of concept they were going for in this movie bad. So, if you haven't heard of the film, it is directed by Mickey Reese, who you may know from Climate of the Hunter, which was also really bad. <laughs> it came out a couple years ago. You know, thinking about it, I sort of realized how bad this was going to be, and I sort of skipped it. But... Curiosity got the better of me. It was one I was actually looking forward to for a pretty long time because I thought, you know, Mickey Reese may have just got off to a bumpy start with Climbing of the Hunter and the new film Agnes was going to actually be really good. Boy, was I wrong in every single way. So the film stars Molly Quinn, who you may remember from the TV show Castle, she played Castle's daughter. Um, pretty good actress. She was always good in that when she appeared and popped up, you know. Um, she's been in some other things. Kind of, you know, not incredibly big things. But pretty good actress. And then it says Son Gunn is in it. James Gunn's brother. Who, um, <laughs> if you're like myself and you're a Gilmore Girls fan. Ah, did I just let that uh, out on air? Dang it. Now you know my dirty little secret. Now I've got all American rejects in my head. Come on, this is a this is like a spiraling downfall here. No, you know him from Kirk from Gilmore Girls. Also, he does a lot of animation for his brother in um, for his brother James Gunn in his movies. He uh, I think was Rocket Raccoon in Guardians of the Galaxy. Did the movements and uh, motion capture for him. I've met him. Awesome dude. I love Sean Gunn. He's a really cool dude. I talked to him for a pretty long time. Cool guy, right? So he was in this. I'm pumped about this, right? And then Rachel True is also in this. From everybody's favorite mid-90s um, witchcraft movie, The Craft, right? So many positives about this movie. Here's the uh, synopsis that Letterboxd gives, okay? The tagline's Face your demons. That's fine. Generic, but it's good. Rumors of demonic possession at a religious convent prompts a church investigation into the strange goings-on among its nuns. A disaffected priest and his neophyte are confronted with temptation, bloodshed, and a crisis of faith. Sign me up. Sounds like a good movie, right? Yes. Now... If you are like me, slashers are my favorite subgenre within horror. Always will be. But probably the subgenre that scares me the most is actually religion based horror films. I just find them really creepy. Um, whether we're talking like movies like Stigmata or um, Resurrection, you know, they scare me. That's just, you know, that's just me. That's just my personal preference. Okay, um, so anytime there's a new religious based kind of horror movie out, I'm excited about it and I want to see it because I want to be I want to see if it can scare me, too. And this brings us to Agnes. First off, the characters you don't like, you don't like a single character in this movie. OK, but that's not even the worst part of this movie. So it starts off with um the most basic generic possession I've ever seen in my life. It looks like they, it takes place at a convent, you know, a, a table of nuns are sitting around having dinner and one of them breaks out being possessed. And it looks like she was just rehashing anything she could remember from the exorcist. It's kind of what it, it seemed like to me. Okay, maybe it was just a bad opening scene. We can move on. We can move on to a good movie, right? Right? No, we can't. 
So then we go to the church where we meet the priest that will be going to the convent to perform the exorcism and his young helper, right? Um, well, apparently he's been accused of sexual misconduct. And we just gloss over this like it's nothing and we're supposed to still like him as a character even though he hasn't denied the rumors. Like, he's basically saying, yeah, he sexually molested people, and we're fine with that. So we don't like anybody from the get-go in this movie, and that's a problem, okay? So then we go to the convent, and I want to say the acting for what they have actually isn't horrible. Okay, the acting might actually be okay. That might be the one bright spot we have in this movie. The writing, the directing, everything else is horrible. Okay, we get to the convent and there's some really, really basic and generically written nuns who are completely turned on by the fact that two men are going to be staying at the convent while they perform this exorcism. Just completely horrible and lazy writing in my opinion and then they do a couple scenes where they try to perform an exorcism but again it just looks like a grade school effort of the exorcist that's what it looks like to me and then we're about 45 minutes into this thing and we get an awkwardly long black screen and then it's a completely different movie. It's not even a horror movie from this point on. One of Molly Crin's character is no longer a nun now. She has left the convent. Apparently a year or two has passed since the attempted exorcism, which apparently didn't work. And now she's living in a new town. And at this point, it becomes like a dramedy where she's trying to find love by going out with a stand-up comedian who is Sean Gunn's character. Huh? I don't know. I got nothing. I was so confused. It's a compl it's not even a horror movie at all. If you get past the first 40 minutes of it, which attempts to have exorcism scenes, the rest of it plays off like a coming-of-age dramedy. And it's not good. Again, incredibly lazy written characters. No real end game. No real plot in sight. They ask a couple of the nuns come back to her new town. And say they're at a new convent. And try to get her to go with her. And she says no. She's happy where she is. Even though she's struggling to pay rent. And seemingly can't find love. But it's going out with the Son Gun's character now. I'm lost. I'm confused. I'm looking all over for the signs of a horror movie and it's not there. I paid five dollars to rent this movie. It was the worst five dollars I've ever spent in my life. Horrible directing, horrible pacing. It's basically two separate movies. One of them attempts to be a horror movie and fails. The other one is a coming-of-age dramedy about a former nun. That's what you get with this movie. I would skip this at all costs. Do not get suckered in like I did to give Agnes a shot. Do not do it. You will regret it. I promise. It is going to get one star for me out of five. And that one star is just because you could tell Molly Crin was trying her best to make something out of this mess of a movie. Okay? There you go. That is it for you guys. I just wanted to hop on and let you know to stay away from the 2021 film Agnes. Do not rock. Do not press play. Do not rent. Go directly to jail. Yeah, Monopoly? Yeah, maybe? I don't know. But hey, you're already here. Go ahead and like and subscribe. Hit that little bell to get notified every time I post a video. You can follow me on Instagram at Horrorsensei. You can follow me on Letterboxd at Husker Sensei. And on Twitter at Haddonfield Sons. Thank you guys so much for sticking around and watching this video. I hope you come back and watch some more videos. 
And that is all for you guys. As always, be sure not to get French fried. Bye, everybody. Thank you.